What's up guys? We are back for another Mythic Legions review from Four Horsemen Studios. I just can't keep my hands off these figures. So we've got a newcomer to the line. We have got Halmir Golden Tooth. So this is one of the Colosseum figures. He is a uh, kind of a dwarf in there. You can see him in that window there. So this is the uh, standard Mythic Legions packaging. We've got the, the big window box there. Collector friendly packaging with that same stuff on the back. Same artwork. I really wish they would change it up from time to time, but ultimately Meh, I don't really care. We do have the uh, little bio card here on the side, and then tons of accessories I think are floating around in a baggie on the inside of this package. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. All right, guys, so here's Mr. Golden Tooth out of the package, and this is what, my fourth Mythic Legions that I've reviewed in a, in the past few weeks. And I gotta say, I am just as excited to get one of these out as I was when I reviewed those previous three. Uh, this one is a little bit different just because it's a smaller figure. You know, he's a dwarf, he's not a human or a skeleton warrior, but he's got a ton of stuff going on. And of course, as we've seen with some of the other figures, he has a ton of accessories and you can change him out and make him a little bit different. He's not as versatile as some of the other ones like uh, Keltus, for example, but I do think that he is pretty cool. He does share some parts with other figures, but that's kind of normal. And in general, I am uh, just happy to have another one of these guys to add to the collection. So we're going to do articulation and paint and sculpt and all that good stuff, and then we'll talk about all of the stuff that this guy comes with. All right, now, as far as articulation goes, this is exactly what you might expect if you've played around with any of these recent Legions figures. He does have a little bit of a hindrance with this beard, but honestly, it works pretty well. So the head is ball jointed, but the neck is actually pegged into the shoulders and it can rotate. So you can swivel it around and it moves a lot better than you might expect. He does go up a little bit. He doesn't really go down too far. You'd have to move the whole body forward. Arms can go out. You see about that far. I keep popping this arm out, you know, time and time again, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. It's, I don't know if it's loose or anything or if I'm just pulling too hard. Obviously, I didn't do it there. We've got swivel and hinge at the elbow. We've got swivel at the wrist itself, and then we have swivel and hinge at the hand, right where the wrist ends. So we do have a waist twist. He can go up and down a little bit. Legs can go all the way out, but those uh, leg pads are going to get in the way just a, tight, uh, a tad bit. Legs can kick forward. We do have a swivel up here. Kick backwards. We've got knee joint. And then we have got a ball hinge down here with rocker, hinge, rotation, the whole deal. So he is pretty much identical in articulation scheme to the other larger figures. And he's really not that small, even for a dwarf. But the beard does get in the way just a little bit, and that's really the only downside I can see to this figure as far as articulation. He does move around quite well. Now, as far as the way this little guy looks, I think that they have, again, and I'm not going to gush on them too much, I think they've done a fantastic job here with just the overall look and appearance. This guy is decked out in a ton of plated armor. You can see the, the plates running up and down the arms, the legs, the chest. I mean, there's tons of painted detail inside there. Look at the plates inside the uh, shoulders and neck lining there. He has chain mail underneath the armor, which you can see at the top of the legs and in the elbow area. So it's very, very uh, accurate to what a suit of armor actually would be in the sense that he has plate armor, but there is chain mail underneath and kind of exposed in the joint areas. We have the winged helmet at the top, which is similar to what we've seen with Rhaegor. Uh, you know, you can pop these guys out and they hide a very interesting thing here. You can actually see his skin tone and his hair inside this helmet, which I think is just a fantastic touch. So you can pop this guy back in and then he's ready to go, or you can swap them out with some of the extra ones that you've gotten with other figures, like Rhaegor, for example. But overall, I'm very, very happy with the way this figure looks. Tons of detail on all these plates, the rivets, the leg padding down here with all of the different paint detail. So I just like the gold and the sort of off bronze color scheme that they've gone with some of those inset details. And then of course, the black details in general. He is another instance of them painting the joints and it flaking off. So it's doing it with my elbows, which I've come to expect it at this point. It's just kind of a weird, weird occurrence. I keep forgetting that it happens. And then I realize, oh yeah, all the other figures did the same thing. So I'm sure most figures will do the same. He does have uh, some shared parts. He does, these are the boots we've seen with like Celtis, for example. I'm sure there's others as well that I'm overlooking, but I, I don't have any other figures in this particular size. Big thing though, 
is that head. Not to mention all of the details with the wings and the helmet, but the face sculpt is very, very nice. That beard is just enormous. Tons of detail inside there and a lot of wash to bring out the, the different areas of the beard as it kind of folds over on top of itself. So yeah, in general, I mean, I can't be upset with really anything about this figure. I think he looks absolutely amazing. Very, very reminiscent of what you might expect a dwarf warrior to be. And we'll do a size comparison here shortly just to show you exactly how different this is from the standard figures in the line. And now as far as accessories goes, as you might expect, and as I've already mentioned, this guy comes with quite a few. And one of the things that is a big theme with some of these figures that I've been seeing lately is the extra shoulder pads to obviously kind of bring out a slight difference. You know, if you have two of them for some reason, you can make them into different characters. So he has two different shoulder pads. They, they go on a specific side. So you've got the black one that mimics his armor, goes on the left, and you've got this humongous gold pauldron that can sit on the right side. It's very worn and beaten and patinaed. It looks fantastic. Tons of dirty detail in there to bring it out. He does, of course, have a bunch of weapons, uh, quite a few actually, and one that is very, very dwarf specific. So the first thing we've got is the standard sword that seems to come with all of them. Uh, this one is a darker metal with a bronze type hilt that has a bunch of dirt on it. He can hold it just fine in either hand. Uh, it's just the standard sword that I think pretty much every figure comes with. We've got this humongous spear that it's obviously quite big. It's just a standard piece of silver plastic with some patina uh, dirt all over it and a standard spear tip. So yeah, pretty neat. Uh, it's obviously a humongous weapon, which I think is great to have for a smaller figure. He comes with a sword sheath that you can put over his back, uh, across his shoulders. This this has come with quite a few of these figures. Uh, really, you can't use it too well if you have the pauldrons on though. So uh, you could put put this guy in through it and then it'll just, you know, go on his back. But the big thing, literally and figuratively, is this fellow right here. So he comes with a humongous war hammer and uh, it's a big silver thing with a humongous anvil on the top of it. Tons of detail, a lot of sculpted detail up at the top, red and yellow gold detail all over it, a lot of paint. It's very, very worn and it looks, you know, kind of dirty. It looks like he has been using it in battle. Again, he can hold this just fine in either hand. And this is like the quintessential dwarf weapon for sure. Uh, so this is the one that I will be using going forward. Uh, I'm sure that's probably what most people would use. You can pop this back part off as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. I mean, I'm sure it is, but I don't know why you'd want to. It has a big hole on the back otherwise. But yeah, this is an absolutely awesome weapon. And, you know, at the very least, you've got a bunch of options with this guy for however you want to configure him. And for size comparisons, like I mentioned, here's Halmir next to Rhaegor. So you can see that there is a definite height difference between these figures. We're looking at, you know, at least an inch and a half or so, not even counting Rhaegor's horns up here. So there's a huge difference in terms of scale. There, there is bulky, so there's not a whole lot of, he's not like a thin figure or anything like that. There's definitely a lot of heft and bulk to this, this little guy, but he is, you know, a head and a half shorter at the very least, which I think helps differentiate the two. And obviously it brings a little bit of difference to the line. They're not all the same height. So it brings a little difference in scale, which I think is fun. So at the end of the day, this is another winner. I don't really have any reasons to not like this figure in any capacity. Uh, it's not my favorite that I've gotten so far, but you know, it's just a difference in opinion on figures. I think he is a very, very cool design. Like I said, I like the fact that he's a little smaller. It makes things, uh, you know, a little different on your shelf, changes things up a bit. He has a great selection of weapons, but of course that dwarf warhammer is, is going to be the mainstay for me for sure. That's just a quintessential dwarf weapon. And then all the other options you've got to configure him in different ways, make him look different, make him stand out from other figures, make him stand out from other collectors who have the same figure just because you set yours up your own special way. Uh, I really like that capacity with these figures far more than I ever thought I would and I really enjoy playing around with all the options they have. So if you haven't already gotten this guy, I would recommend it. Uh, you can pick him up on Big Bad Toy Store as uh, still, and I'll put a link down below. So let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.